A Lucasfilm producer is out there calling the fans toxic again. I know you have never heard that before. And guess what? The strategy that just seems to always not work out so well for the studio is probably not going to work again. I know it's a shocker. Why does Lucasfilm continue to do this? And why is this producer out there simping for Kathleen Kennedy? We'll get into it right now. And folks, we are here to explain entertainment, keep you ahead of the culture curve. It's what we do each and every day. Pleasure to do so. Happy to have each and every one of you aboard. And folks, if you like content like this, consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, and stick it to the algorithms. Click it, the notification bell. Joining me to help us navigate through what is going on, this crazy playbook they're bringing out again, Caffeinated Wolf, welcome back. Hey, thanks for having me again, Pro. Love to be here. Well, these are fun, aren't they? These are just really fun. I mean, you you just can't believe that they're going to uh, try it again. But here we go. This out of the direct by Richard Nebens, Star Wars producer, calls out toxic fandom attacking Kathleen Kennedy. Why is it? Why is it that the Star Wars uh, franchise that has you would assume fans that enjoy all sorts of different franchises and properties, but it's Star Wars that has a toxic fandom. Now they may enjoy. For example, they may enjoy Marvel, but they're not toxic. They may enjoy Star Trek, but they're not toxic. They may enjoy Harry Potter, but they're not toxic until they're part of Star Wars, and then they're toxic. I think it has something to do with the fact that Star Wars is not in a good place. Wolf, here's the article. It says, as Lucasfilm president Kathleen Kennedy works to juggle the upcoming Star Wars slate, along with toxic comments from her fans, those are of equal footing, by the way, folks, great writing upcoming. One franchise creative called out fans coming for Kennedy's head. Star Wars has been no stranger to com uh, toxic comments from fans, as many saw most recently. This is very recent, by the way. With Rose Tico actress Kelly Marie Tran, who left social media altogether after remarks made about her following Episode 7, The Last Jedi. Excuse me, Episode 8, The Last Jedi. Now, that was very recent, Wolf. That was 2017, which is... Let me add the math to carry the one minus the fives multiply. S how many? Seven years ago? Six years ago? Five? Six years ago, right, folks? So, Caffeinated Wolf, they're really going back to six years ago. The playbook from six years ago is what they're having to go back to in order to defend Kathleen Kennedy, as we are now believing that she is exiting in the next 12 months. What say you? I, 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 I wish I could pretend to be just shocked and surprised and taken aback by the fact that they're dipping back into the well. I feel like I've seen this episode. I really do. It's it's almost kind of sad now. It's kind of a copy and paste episode, same way as Force Awakens was basically a copy and paste of A New Hope, just worse. This is the exact same thing. We've seen this before. They're operating off of false information. And just making us laugh at this point. This would yeah, be like if I, yeah, it's like if I tried making an argument the earth was flat or something right now in 2023 and, and using points that people were making hundreds of years ago. <laughs> this well, is on honestly, that level. Honestly, it's just making us laugh at this point. Um, I don't see that, uh, I, I just don't see that this is going to work. I don't know how it could work. They've tried this for six years. It has not made Star Wars any more popular. But let's no, let's continue it's on. To their let's, detriment. <laughs> let's see how much better this gets. Meanwhile, there have also been rumors circulating regarding Ka uh, Kathleen Kennedy potentially being let go from her Lucasfilm job, all while the franchise looks to get back on its feet in terms of its big screen movies. And they link this to poor old John Campia, who is just not having a good time lately. I don't know if you've seen what's coming out of him uh, uh, recently, but it's uh, it's vitriolic. It's uh, not fun to watch a man devolve, but. Uh, it's, of course, a rumor that uh, is largely debunked. Not that she's leaving, but his particular rumor that he had. They don't want to mention me, and I know they're watching out there, but uh, they don't want to mention me, and I'm just now reporting that it does look like she'll be leaving in the next 12 months. Funny that people are often uh, uh, bringing that rumor about. Now, this is the first time I've ever done it because it's the first time I've ever heard that, yeah, she probably is. But you wouldn't think that a good head of a studio would have this type of uh, rumor circulating nonstop. It seems to point to the idea that Star Wars just isn't doing well. And no, here's I think, where we get I the think white it's a couple knight. of reasons. Okay, all right. Those couple, well, okay, here's the, here's the white wolf, and then I want those reasons. 
So here we go. Andor producer slams toxic Star Wars fans. Before I read this, let me explain that there is currently a writer's strike, and there are currently other strikes potentially on the horizon. And this individual, Tony Gilroy, is bored. And not only is he bored, but there's a second season of Andor that's supposed to happen. Yeah, when nobody watched the first one. Right. It might not. So, Wolf, any ideas why someone who has nothing to do and is bored, but potentially in the future, could have a series that would have to be approved by Kathleen Kennedy, might be trying to go out there and white knight for Kathleen Kennedy? It's it's the attempt at a booty smooch in order to <laughs> in order to like try and retain your hopeful still existent job for a show that nobody watched the first season of furthermore from that it also has a lot to do with the fact that as you said star wars is in a bad place they these people look after their own they protect their own we see this all the time until one of them goes off script with something ideologically that they disagree with. The other thing being, the reason why they keep circling back to this whole toxic Star Wars fan base and they want to go back into the well, dig deep to six years back and, and pull out misinformation that's been long debunked is because this is when the whole fan backlash started. It's truly started with Star Wars. Yes, there was Ghostbusters 2016, but Star Wars was something on another level when The Last Jedi came out. The Last Jedi was the film that launched a thousand YouTube channels, okay? And it's still launching new ones. So they have to continually push back against the fans because it's the fans, ironically, uh, that are the reason why they're in a bad spot because we're not buying what they're selling. Now, Wolf, people click on my videos, I assume, because they're hoping that I will explain entertainment and keep people ahead of the culture curve. It's what we advertise. It's what we endeavor to do. And I'm going to say something here that I bet nobody will say until they hear me say it. That's not to to be too braggadocious, although I suppose it is a little. But here's here's what is actually happening. It's not without precedent. Well, you know, we try. But here is what what I believe is actually happening. This is what this whole article can be summed up to. Please don't willow me. Please don't turn my series into willow. What just happened with the with the willow series? Tossed well, out. John Caston's product was removed completely from Disney Plus as a write down. Now, what's the writer strike about? The writer strike is about trying to give these writers and other creatives uh, better royalties, better profit sharing off of streaming services. That's part of it. Artificial intelligence is another huge component. Tony Gilroy is looking at the second season and he's thinking, boy, I'd like to have a second season. Boy, I'd like to be able to share in the profits of it. Boy, I hope that Disney doesn't uh, cut me out and remove the first season completely because the ratings are terrible. Boy, that would suck. I wouldn't make any money. Oh, I know what I can do. Let me get out here and, uh, and, and talk about the toxic Star Wars fans and ingratiate myself with Kathleen Kennedy. That's what this is all about. This entire thing, this kerfuffle that's going to go on over the weekend about this. It's please don't willow me, but let's see what it has to say. Speaking with Deadline, Andor head writer, producer Tony Gilroy addressed the toxicity he sees from fans towards Star Wars president Kathleen Kennedy. Please give me money. Please don't cut my content no one watched. Look in the comments that Kennedy sees every day. Gilroy was shocked, shocked, I tell you, by what he saw during or saw happen during his work on Rogue One, a Star Wars story. It was shocking on Rogue One because I didn't really have any exposure. When Rogue happened and everything that happened, I was really blown back by what was going on and this that I hadn't paid attention to. So I knew about it when I came back. I knew what to expect. That came out before Last Jedi. There wasn't any blowback. That's just a bunch of nonsense. I was going to say, to to bother bringing up Rogue One is hysterical because Rogue One was at most like just kind of forgettable or people mostly enjoyed it. There there really isn't that much of an extreme one way or the other. People weren't truly singing its praises the fans also largely weren't bashing it to high heck like they were with the last jedi it just kind of existed and people enjoyed the last few seconds where you get to see vader that's basically it there there was not this uproar and toxic fan backlash with rogue one this is nonsense this is a historical please let me be a victim too please let me say that for years and years they've been attacking me even though they weren't please I feel the same pain as 
is Kelly Marie Tran. <laughs> Insert the Thanos meme. I don't even know who you are. That's right. Exactly. He understands the passion that the fandom community shows for Star Wars, noting that this love is something that you really have to pay attention to. These are deep words out of Tony Gilroy today. Guys, you need to pay attention to customers. Ooh, thank you, boss. You have to realize about that community that they're passionate. They love this thing so much. The hardcore deepest you have within that community of Shiites and Sunnis and Kurds that you have. What the? Why is he bringing Islam into this? What the <laughs> heck kind of comparison is he drawing here? Did he just make a comparison to a major religion, to Star Wars? Oh, uh, Muslims across the world are going to love that one. Yes. Wow. Star Wars is analogous to a major religion and to its followers. Well played, Tony Gilroy. You're really on the cusp of PR greatness. His main focus when developing his material is to never, ever be cynical about it, making sure to treat the material with respect and seriousness that it deserves, such as making comparisons to major religions with your uh, fantasy world. So my attitude has been, and the attitude of the show is, as much as we, as far out there as we get, and as much as we bend the tone and the idea, we can never, ever be cynical about it. We can't be cynical about destroying things, folks. We have to take it more seriously than anybody's ever taken it. We're never winking. We're never kidding. Please tell me that was. Oh, like, is that why Andor wasn't me. any fun and nobody watched? <laughs> <laughs> this is this is so bad. No this wonder. Is something. This the show. The shows feature a mix of people who aren't as familiar with Star Wars, along with diehard fans, explaining that the marriage of knowledge and history combines with a desire to take the story somewhere good. He says, and so we have this mix of people who know nothing about Star Wars on our show. And then we have a bunch of people on the show that are huge nerds, and it's the marriage of knowledge and history. Mixed with a real ambition to take it someplace else with a hopefully respect. I want to respect that audience. Well, thank goodness somebody does. All right, so let's get to what he says about Kathleen Kennedy, because this is really where he's uh, he's saying, please don't willow me, please. Taking things back to Kennedy, he made it clear that he doesn't envy the job she has to do. Darn it, he doesn't want that mansion with 18 restrooms and 20 bedrooms. Doesn't want it considering all the comments she has to see all over the internet. It must ruin her day, folks, as she's sitting there on her diamond-encrusted uh, potty seat and she has to read on her phone all of these negative comments. Now, I do read what they... There's no way doing it and not being controversial. There's no way. It's impossible. And, like, KK's job is like, you don't want to be Kathy ever up on the internet. It's just what she goes through and what they... And it's been on for years. This man can't English, apparently. Yeah, you got to have pretty thick skin to do that, but I pay attention. I don't think we made any real adjustments because of it, but it's been interesting to watch. He goes on to call out the toxic fandom. Ye gads, Wolf, is this going to change anything at all, or is this just no. still a bunch of utter nonsense? No, because this is the vicious cycle that, that this is actually going to perpetuate. What were the fans ticked off about initially? Bad content, right? We said, this doesn't respect this thing that we've loved for decades. Their response was to call us toxic. Their response was to call us racist or sexist or whatever else. And that just ingratiated and ingrained the idea that, okay, this company doesn't actually care about the fans. They don't care about their core demographic, the people that are going to actually pay for this product over and over and over by the novels, by the comics, by the action figures, by the replicas. And this is just getting perpetuated further and further. Why should I be surprised? This is this has been their MO since 2015, really. Well, if you look at it, I mean, this is very simple. And, and these people, they thrive on narrative. They can't stand objective truth. But that's what we do. We get in the data. We get in, you know, we look at the statistics. This franchise is doing poorly. The novels are not selling like you would expect. They are not successful in terms of streaming. If you look at even The Mandalorian, the ratings are down tremendously versus prior seasons, and that's the best they have. The, the subscribers for North America dropped by hundreds of thousands in the same quarter that The Mandalorian Season 3 premiered. The box office is gone. They can't release a movie. They're talking about it. We think they will eventually, but this has been years and years. And so what they try to do is... When we criticize that, when we look and we go, okay, well, there's something wrong here. You know, this is not functioning as, as a healthy franchise would. They then spin that and try to say, oh, it's toxicity. They don't like uh, Kathleen Kinney because she's a woman. And, and we're like, we, we don't care. We don't care who she is. We don't care what her biological sex is. We care about reporting how this franchise is doing. But let me show you what happens here, Wolf. This is from the Wiki of Nerds, 
Of course, they're piggybacking off of this other article, and this will happen over the weekend. There'll be more articles piggybacking off of it. This by Akshay Sharma, uh, and I, I want to skip all of it, basically, because it just retreads it until we get to the bottom. And this is what I find fascinating. It says, while constructive criticism is essential for any franchise, Tony Gilroy empathizes with the personal attacks that Kathleen Kennedy endures regularly. He noted that Kennedy has the support of fellow writers and directors within Lucasfilm. Well, yeah, she signs their paychecks. That'll do it. Standing by her side during this challenging period. Why is it so challenging? Currently, Kennedy is in the process of reorganizing the theatrical side of Star Wars as part of a reported five-year plan to restore the franchise to its former glory. Wolf, who destroyed the glory? Uh, that would be most of the people presently <laughs> at Disney Lucasfilm. If you want you to restore this... the glory, you need to clean house. Yeah, look you... at her laughing as her this the woman... franchise she's in charge of dies. And the people, the people who are supporting her, right? Those are the ones who must have taken it from its glory because it was doing pretty darn good when The Force Awakens came out. It's they only after laughing. that that it collapses. Yeah, they are laughing because they had they had the opportunity after The Force Awakens. There were legitimate criticisms with that movie, but they had the opportunity to take it and take it in a smart direction to pivot away from some of the things that fans were critical of and be like, okay, yeah, th there's something to this. Let's do what people will give us their money for. Oh my gosh, what but a concept. No, right? I, I don't look, I, I don't have a business to go. Oh, yeah, I do have a business degree. <laughs> so um you you actually do typically want to provide your core demographic with things that they're willing to spend money on. That's who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk it? Let's Certainly read this last I. sentence. I, I love I love that the author of this, and you know, we, we don't want to be mean to anyone, um, but it's it is just something. It's a study in psychology that this this escaped them. Let's read the last sentence. Despite the difficulties, she remains at the forefront. Generating excitement for the upcoming projects over the next few months and years with the aim of reclaiming Star Wars position at the top of the entertainment industry. That's where it was when Disney bought it. It, it came out and it grossed over $2 billion because people wanted Star Wars. It died because of her. Yeah. How they could miss this when they were writing the article is beyond me. Do they not understand that She's reclaiming that which she lost on her own. Wolf. This this is this is classic, um, and not you. You could take this politically. You could take this in entertainment. You could take this in any direction. This is classic example, textbook example of somebody trying to be the savior for a problem that they caused to begin with. I am thinking that we're going to see more of these Tony Gilroy type statements as we honestly believe that Kathleen Kennedy does not have much longer at Lucasfilm. Now, I don't know exactly when she will be let go. I have been told anywhere from October of this year until uh, the third quarter of next year. We will wait and see when it is that she goes and perhaps, perhaps I'll be wrong. And if, if so, I will apologize. I have never reported that she would leave Lucasfilm before. And I don't think that she'll be embarrassed. I don't think she'll be humiliated. I think she'll probably get a fake promotion to a legacy position. She'll get all kinds of accolades nice and celebrations. Parachute. That's right. The golden parachute, the stock options, although those may not be worth very much at that time. <laughs> but, if it continues along this trend, yeah. Exactly. But I just want to say that things are different now um, with, the, with the position Disney has where they don't have the financial standing they had in the past. I don't think they can carry her much longer when she's losing the kinds of money that she is. And as we go into the Indiana Jones movie, where we suspect that film could lose literally hundreds of millions of dollars, it is, it is an utter fiasco. I suspect that we will get people like Tony Gilroy, these people who they have projects that are dependent on Kathleen Kennedy in the short term. I suspect they'll come out with very glowing reviews of her. And I suspect that, uh, astute readers and viewers of this channel will know what's really up, that these are financial pleas from these people. Please don't willow me. Wolf, what a fantastic thing to see them going back to the playbook all over again, though. It didn't work. It's not going to work. Final thoughts on Star Wars, Kathleen Kennedy, and this whole strategy they have of attacking fans. Maybe you'd like to uh, wrap this up by explaining that the whole premise is a bunch of uh, malarkey about uh, the Rose Tico situation. <laughs> malarkey, yeah. That was one of the first big uh, kerfuffles, to, to use your word, um, early on when fans were criticizing 
The Last Jedi. I mean, they were criticizing it front to back, really, aside from, you know, people that were being honest were like, okay, it's a pretty movie and it's got great sound design, sure, and, and even good cinematography, but everything else, the, the you know, the, the characters, the story, blah, 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 just awful. And, you know, that's, that's kind of like, Wolf. Well, that's kind of like if you get a hamburger from a fast food place and you're like, well, the, the wrapping around it's really nice. Um, it's rotting in the, you know, when you open yeah, up the packaging. Basically, basically, it was rotting from the inside out. And Rose Tika was just an ostensibly unlikable character. She was useless to the movie. They took this, and, and fans made note of this, they took this pretty young Asian woman and put her in a potato sack and gave her this ridiculous haircut and they turned her into a joke and an unlikable character. And that's what fans were going on about among a million other things in the film. But they tried the media just in the same way that they did with Ahmad Best. The media tried to spin things and they took that and said, oh, well, you know, she she left social media because she did. She did leave social media, but it wasn't out of fans attacking her because we've yet to really see receipts on that. I, I've yet to see this big old archive of fans hating on this young Asian actress who was put in a terrible role as a terrible character with terrible scripting. I've yet to see those receipts. I would really like to see them if they do in fact exist that aren't Lucasfilm bots. Um, and that was disproven. We've yet to see, what, six years removed? Nothing? Six years, but we're back again. But we're, we're digging back, in back into cycle. that same well. Same old rerun episode. Uh, they, they deserve to fail at this. If they're going to continue to be dishonest about things they've already been proven to be dishonest about, come on, guys. This is I not I will say hard. this. For the audience out there who hopes to see Kathleen Kennedy go for whatever reasons you might hold, I would say that this is a pretty good indicator that perhaps we're moving in that direction because if you'll recall, the last time that they really attacked the fans like this, it was after The Last Jedi. And that was a hugely important film for them. They thought they were going to launch a whole new trilogy off of it. They needed it to get to the success in the next film. And The Last Jedi was one of the most damaging films ever in the history of cinema. It, it destroyed that trilogy. It destroyed the prospects of Star Wars. Uh, dropped a series that was able to make $2 billion to one that would struggle to make a single billion going forward. And so that, that had a huge amount of interest from Disney as the corporation to try to save it. And the strategy was to attack the fans. Now Kathleen Kennedy, uh, people are attacking fans over her. It makes you wonder who has a lot of stake in this. And perhaps it is the Hollywood royalty, Kathleen Kennedy herself, who may be on the way out soon. Well, Wolf, where can people find you on this great, big, beautiful web out there? They can find me over on Twitter. My handle right below. They can find me over on Twitch at Kathleen DeWolf, where I stream games throughout the week. And they can also find me on uh, World Class BS every Tuesday night. I'm the co-host of the High Council. And Wolf, is there any big news going along in your professional life in, in terms of the business you work for? Oh, boy, is there ever. This month, we are going to be launching... Isom number two, second book, an ill-advised Ill arc over at the Ripiverse. I am the creative and social media manager for that company. I am Eric July's personal social media manager as well. And if you guys haven't been paying attention, we announced that we have the legendary Chuck Dixon um, writing one of our upcoming books for this fall, Alpha Core. And we got the Sasuke sisters of uh, cult horror movie fame and uh, also Black Widow No Restraints play over at Marvel Comics fame writing a Yaira book this winter as well. Well, if Big you're things. looking for winning, that seems to be the way to do it. Yeah, maybe Lucasfilm should take notes. Yeah, I was going to say, I bet none, none of the people in your orbit are going to be calling your own customers, your own fans, toxic anytime soon. So folks, it's time for you to drop a comment down below. We've wrapped up this conversation. Now we need to hear from you. Your opinions really do matter. We covet your comments, so drop one down. And if you like content like this, well, you might consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, stick it to the algorithms. And now you, you do that when you click it. We're talking about the notification bell. Wherever you are, whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, keep having fun. I just found out to get WDW Pro's information where he gets his sources. I can't believe he uses it. Well then, well then, Listen. We, we got a job to do. Or, uh, it's, it's easy to hack into WDW Pro's uh, computer. They're kidding me.
I fought them. You know where you have them stuff? Yeah, just uh, jo Jonas Campbell told me. Sweet. Said pro underpaid him or something. A few minutes later. <laughs> All I gotta do is uh, hack into this thing. It's, it's gonna be so easy. Yeah, this is a hack. Right, uh, grab this uh, picture over here. Leave it to me. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Wilson. Job done. Uh, what? No, all we had to do was use the picture because he uses face unlock. Now we gotta go to thatparplace.com and sub to him and his team on YouTube. Oh, well, I already did that because I'm smart. 